Perfect. Okay, start recording. All right. Um, so I realized. Let me just uh, copy the agenda thing. Last week's was long. I realized something that's going to solve, I think, a lot of our config problems, hopefully. Um, but okay, so and here's what I realized. Shared config issue. Okay. Um. I'm sorry, we're very slow to start today, so John has been working on this. Okay, so let me give you some background on what I've been up to. Um, basically, okay, this is not where I want to be. Oh, my windows are fucked down, okay. Okay. Alright, so... I was working on this thing, so I told you guys I have to do all these compliance tasks, right? Um, so I was working on this thing to do the compliance tasks, and basically I built this command line utility to interact with all these various web apps that we have has gone yesh, um, and uh, so that I don't have to go to all the web apps and I can basically script um, some of the compliance task stuff. Um, for example, like there's some things that are like I have to go and set one task is non applicable um, every single time because I'm not releasing any binaries, right? We're releasing only source code. Um, so, and Intel has this one task that we have to do if we're releasing binaries, but we're not releasing binaries. Um, so, uh, basically, I have to go through and, like, you know, however many plugins we have in DSFML, I have to go through the web app and click through several screens of the web app and hit NA, right? So, I wanted to script this stuff. Um, so, in the process of doing that, we have these command line clients and so, or cl command line code. And so I'm using obviously the command line framework that we have within DFFML. Um, and I realized, so I realized that we sort of have a gap. Um, and our gap is basically that we, okay, so. And then I wanted to write some scripts where I was using basically the command line client, so I'd have to instantiate the class and call the run method. But you know, each of these command line client classes, uh, they have an a inner me method. So when you're, if you want to do some setup, right? So say I want to interact with some external API. That external API, um, you know, is obviously some kind of web thing. So I'm going to create an AIO HTTP client session. Um, well, I'm not going to need to have a, a inner method for the thing using the client session session just kind of like the PyPy operations have um, you know um, um, just like how the PyPy operations have imp enter and context enter and we enter the client session um, and the database operations do uh, imp enter on the database and then context enter on the database context um, so we can do that within the CLI classes, but we only get one level of context entry there. Um, and so, and then you have to create the class. Um, it's sort of the same thing we ran through when we did the high level stuff, which is we had to pull out, well, I had to pull out the code from the CLI. Um, I had to pull out the code from the CLI classes into high level, right? And then we end up with these functions in high level. Um, and it's like, okay, great. Now we have functions, but now we need the CLI wrapper around them. Okay, so, and then, okay, well, what if I want to use them as operations? Well, then I have to write an operation that wraps them. All right, so basically what I realized is is everything, as as, as we've all, all realized, you know, everything needs to be an operation. Um, so um, this led me... This led me down this path of, of trying to figure out, okay, let's make, let's make, let's try to figure out how to make uh, uh, an operation into something that we can set as a command, right? Because if we go into our DFO, CLI, data flow, right? So if we go into here and we're like, okay, what are these... Um, what are these, uh, what are the subcommands here? Well, we have to point them at another class, which is a CLI class, right? It has a run method. Well, what if we could just point them at an operation, right? Um, and then, right, then we can, we can 
take this, um, you know, what would be the config is now the operation inputs. Um, so, yeah, so what would be the config is now the operation inputs. Um, and uh, this led me to Sakshams patch for no def for the defaults, default values for operations, because then we're going to end up needing default values um, for, you know, some of these, um, right? Like if we're going to, if we're going to simulate, what we, if we're going to redo what we did here, then we're going to need default value. We're going to need a lack of, we're going to need the ability to set default values in operations um, because obviously command line things have default values. Um, and then command line things also, you know, like I was talking about, if a command line, um, uh, if, if we've got like an a enter method for one of these commands, um, well, how's that going to work? Well, that ends up becoming essentially the operations config. And then um, you can use the operations config to do the a enter there. Um, and so essentially, I, I got down this rabbit hole that sort of, it sounded like, and then as is, it's going to lead to where we're at with your thing, Agen, is that I, I ended up needing some of what Saksham you were doing, and then I ended up needing, or I ended up hitting the same issue that you were hitting Agen with, um, you know, parsing these, these uh, config as, as, as it's, well as base calls it the config dict right is the plugin plus config um and so i think i realized what i realized was that we really need to be storing and it's like you were saying like how do i get the type information right well the type information is usually stored in the arg um, structure which would come from the config um right because we take these we used to have the args and config method and then basically you know sakshan went through and, and made it all config um so uh at this point um yeah, everything is everything is config, but then it gets converted to arg, and then that convert value function. Um, so this convert value this convert value function takes an arg and a value, and then it decides how to convert it, right? Um, and so what? But but this won't help you load your plugin if you don't know what your type of your plugin is, right? So basically what I realized, this is pretty simple, but basically we just need to be including the type of the plugin in with these config dicks because it's like, it's, it's, if we have the type, then we can just go through the entry points for that, you know, type, right? And the type will essentially just be, um, you know, dffml.model, dffml.operation, or whatever it is. And at that point, we have, we can do, you know, a convert, uh, you know, convert config dict. And, uh, right, so this would have a counterpart that's basically just convert config, or like load, yeah, load config dict. And so this would be, you know, plugin and type in value and config and the fact that that's a dictionary, right? Um, and then this would go through basically and do package resources, iter entry points um, for, you know, the value. Um, um, type uh, so five dot name equals value plugin I dot load uh, and then you know. So currently we are not using this information. Like, are we using this information anywhere? Uh, what do you mean? Are we using this information it? anywhere? So We're, uh, we still have when we are storing, we are storing config and plugin, right? Yeah, we're storing config and plugin, right? But the missing link plugin, here is so that we need we need type, oh, right? We don't have a, we don't have type, okay. right? So if we store type in the config uh, dictionary, then we end up with this right where we can do um this is what it takes to load anything right um uh let me make this a little bit bigger 
Um, Yeah, so this is basically all it takes to load anything at this point, right? Because we've got the type information, which is going to be something like um, diff, so type diff model, and actually what we'll probably do here is something like, you know, uh, to do uh, if no diff melt dot type is found, try without or wrong. There we go. Um, so plugin equals, you know, SLR. So we could do something like this, right? Config um, feature um, you know the, what's it called? Yeah, like x int one. Well, you guys get the point. Um, you guys get the point, right? Is there anyone who's okay? Cool. Um, it's fine if somebody's somebody's not sure. Just want to make sure. All right. Um, okay. So this will basically be like what we're doing now, um, and because uh, this at this point, like this is, uh, uh, and I came up with a great name for it: uh, the theory of unified config. Um, or wait, no, the unified configuration theory, or something. Something on that play on that physics thing. Um, but basically, I mean, at this point, like, we've got all the information we need. If we store everything like this, now we've got all the information we need at any point in time to load anything, right? Um, so that's sweet. Um, and now the other part of this is that we need to do that thing that we talked about, where we basically, anytime we get anything, um, let me make sure I'm recording here. Yes, I am recording. Okay. Anytime we get anything, like, so say the data flow comes in and we get the configs or you know we get something in from the command line right away we need to go through and recurse all the way down and then load any config dictionaries that that are there right there's that's this is that because i think yeah it's not yeah, like it, both places yeah because or else we end up with this mess <laughs> right yeah exactly right we end up with this mess where it's like okay well what is like you you pass a value to something and then it's not loaded right um so and another thing that we might want to do is we might want to actually just apply this load config dict on top of um on top of well it needs to go everywhere yeah it needs to go everywhere like it, it pretty much needs to go everywhere i mean unless the the only other thing is like if you see you know if you the other place that i think this is important that we do this is on top of the um, make config, um, so on top of the uh, data class that we create, basically like wrap the init method or something to intercept any types that are uh, base configurable types. And if they are base configurable types, then attempt to config load what you see as the input if the input is like a dictionary, you know. Um, so there's a couple, but because you guys know, you guys have all experienced this problem, I assume, that you go to do something and then like you don't have a loaded object for some reason. Um, and so hopefully this fixes that. And so that's why I wanted to go over it at the beginning because I think it's it's going to affect everyone. So um, um, so basically solution include uh, plugin type in config um, so um, uh, plugin type example model translates to different dot model entry point okay um Right, and then the other side effect of this is, like I said, so we're gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it so that we can have an operation be a 
operation can be a CLI command, um, and so that's going to be convenient. Um, okay. Now that we're done with that, um, okay, let's go through again. What else? Um, what else is there? Anything you just since we're I just have the uh, the locking PR to attribute this. Locking PR. Uh, John, can you give an example for uh, operations being in CLI? Um, let's see. Uh, can I give an example? Um, let's see. Because I was looking into that. Uh, because there'll be like in image or processing, there'll be like uh, so many operations we need to perform on some image for getting two to three features, mm -hmm. uh, feature arrays, and that will be a very long uh, config file, and we'll need to write a very long data flow create command. So that would be very helpful if you can explain more on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, okay. How do, how should I... Okay. Well, really, all I meant by that was just that. Let me show you what I meant by that. Uh, okay. So it's basically, you know, like the service dev run command. Um, uh, John, how would how would this be different from like data flow create and data flow run? Well, no. Okay, so all I'm saying is that an operation it's it's basically the same as the service dev run command, um, which let's see. Um, okay, maybe only uh, Yash uh, Varshney has seen this. Okay. Um, Let's see, I wonder if I have, yeah, we have this. So the service dev run command. Uh, oh, we're in the middle of that editing things, aren't we? Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so the service dev run command takes an operation and it runs it from the command line. So you basically say, okay, what's my operation? And then what's my, um, what are my arguments to that operation? Um, so example, should I, should I? Python bandit. So if this is the operation run bandit and PKG is its argument um, and then it outputs this dictionary here, right? Um, it's just going to go and run this operation, you know, as if it were, a, you know, a command line um, uh, option, right? So basically what I'm saying is that when I say we can use an operation as a command line, um, from the command line, I'm, I'm saying that if we had this thing that was like class, should I CLI, right? And so this is, I mean, this is how I, you guys probably haven't seen this much other than Saksham. But if you were to say, you know, Python equals Python, um, it's just, there's, we have our own custom abstraction around arg parse because of the stupid dependency issues where I can, can't use dependencies. Um, so and then so bandit equals bandit command um you would have to write this thing where you'd say um um we'd have to write async def run self and then you'd have a config and the config would go in and be the, you'd have to write the, it's uh, so let's see. If ml, uh, CLI ML, right? So if we have the predict all command, we set the, we set the, we have a config 
and then the config is where we get the command line arguments from and then we implement the run method and the run method is actually what goes and you know does something right like that's this is the body of the cli command right and so um what i'm saying is that and actually let me redo that so then here when we've got like so when we have predict we have you know record equals predict record and all equals predict all and so when we have these you know then so this is what happens when you say dffml dffml uh predict all it runs this command here that we're that we're looking at the body of right now um that's what happens it runs this right so what i'm saying is that um instead of doing that kind of way where we're, we're defining command line commands like that we could just do run bandit um and then when i type um you know should i python bandit it runs this right here right and i would pass it you know pkg um whatever right and if it had a config i would do config um you know client or yeah client session for example with the AIOHTP stuff dot timeout is 42 right um, so these are going to be arguments and then things pre prefix with config are going to be um, you know things will go into the configuration of the operation so basically you're just going to be able to take any operation and build a command line like if you had operations just single operations that you wanted to run from the command line you could build a command line client using this syntax where it just runs that operation. Now, the nice part of that is, of course, it's going to uh, you can you can just call those Python functions as regular functions other places, right? So, if you're building a command line client that's also a library, then you have the function that's just your regular function, and then you can call it. You can you can have you basically your command line. This is you declaring what your command line looks like, and I don't have to write any wrappers around what are the argument abstraction. Like I just say, here's this operation. And now my command line knows how to run that operation, right? Um, and then the other nice part about this is, of course, basically anything that you write now, you can also just throw it in a data flow and run it in a data flow too. Um, does that make sense, what I'm trying to say? Uh, yes, now I understand. Okay. That was a confusion. So, like we can even extend this to have like multiple operations run with one command. Um, well, we can I'm get new operation. Yeah, I mean, you could do that's ex so. Yeah, the sort of the idea is that you know you could you could have, I mean, you could you could. Yeah, the idea is basically, you know, no matter what you're doing, whether you're writing data flows or you're writing a command line client or you're writing, you know, just some Python functions that you're using as a library, you know, you can use them all is the same way. You don't have to do anything different. Like you don't have to write any extra code to wrap anything, whether whatever you're doing, right? Um, right. So the whole idea is we make it so that we're always writing less code. Um, um, and not any wrappers that change because it's all just the same stuff, right? It just has to do with what are the arguments to this thing and what is co its config. Um, so anyways, yeah, so, um, okay. Um, so I'm gonna, let's see, let's uh, yeah. polls, okay. Um, a sure config issue, are we pretty much caught up on that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I'm basically gonna I'm gonna figure out this, this I'm gonna implement the theory of unified config, <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it up. So let's see. So. You're naming the PR like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm probably that's probably what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to uh, implement this um, at, as own PR then. Uh, once merged into master, um, use within shared config PR. Um, and yeah, so I'm also, will also implement uh, recursive uh, instantiation of configs. Um, okay. 
Um, so yeah, so basically I'm going to try to fix the whole config thing and then hopefully it'll be good. I think this was sort of the last step that we needed when we talked about unifying the config stuff. We sort of glossed over this um, as something that like should be done at some point. Like there's these objects, they're not always, as I mentioned this to Saksham, is that we have all of these you know, we have all these config objects and we have configs of various type, right? Some things are dictionaries, some things are strings, numbers, like whatever. Some things are dictionaries that are not config objects, right? Um, so what we really need to make sure is that we're looking through everything. Every time we load any kind of dictionary in memory, we look through it and load any config objects, right? That we, anytime it's, you know, coming through the CLI or the data flow um, through configs, right? Something that might contain config objects that we're going to need to instantiate, we go instantiate them first. Um, so, and then I think that will sort of hopefully solve most of our config woes for a while. Um, so Shaksham, what did you want to talk about today? Uh, I just want to talk about my pull request. Uh, and like, I, I am not able to figure out a method to merge all of these, uh, all of the feature vectors I get into a single feature vector. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So let's see. We will discuss that and go over that. All right. So, like, there can be a like ambiguous number of feature vectors when when uh, someone needs, and we can't just specify like you you can only add three or two feature vectors into a single one, merge them into a single one. Okay, um, and then Himanshu, uh, I know that yeah, you so just finished two big pull requests. Nice job on that. Yeah, thanks. So there was a small uh, bug in there. Okay. I missed the logging directory, so I opened a small pull request. Okay. Oh, you saw that? Great. Okay. Um, yeah. This is the this is the tempter that was that was. Is yeah. this the temporary directory right. that's hanging around still, or? Oh, no, 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 it wasn't a temporary directory. Actually, the, uh, there is a summary writer in PyTorch, so it logs everything. Oh, okay. so it automatically is uh, logging in a default directory. So there, uh, it was creating a runs directory inside the transformers okay. directory. That's what I meant. Okay, great. Okay, if you got that, then that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for here. So, yeah, so now, now I'm taking the argument from user. So log directory. You can input and that will be used for logging. Okay, so nice. Um, let's just make sure this is, this doesn't look like there's any reason this should have failed. Oh yeah, so, and that's the other thing about me automating the compliance stuff is we get to do a release soon. Um, okay. Really, Python? Really? Um, okay. Um, I guess, <laughs> let's, can we, can you just, let's see, um, well, that's, okay. Yeah, can you just change this real quick, um, and then, like, to make it do like an assert greater than, you know, 0.0, because .0, I my guess it's a float in in thing. Um, okay. 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 Actually, I'm not on the on my system, so I that's okay. Using the mobile. That's okay. Let me. I'll, I'll just uh, queue it logged it. Let me just pull it down. Okay. I guess it should be greater than or equal to. Oh yeah, greater than. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah. Greater equal was that? A f I can never remember whether it's. I think it is. Okay, yeah, I assert greater or equal. All right, let's just change that real quick. Uh, and then I have to also begin working on the operations, NLP operations. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right, good check out, good fetch. Uh, oh, Sudeshna. Oh, we got Sudeshna, great. Um, so let's see, uh, fetch. Um, um, uh, yeah, your zero test. That's right. Okay. Let's just fix that. QA logged or uh, so it'd be models, transformers, test, test, classification model.
Assert greater. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to make sure we fix this in that one versus trans. Numbers, tests, classification. And then your so will start work on NLP operations. Okay. Um, merged uh, QA model example. So you merge the QA model examples, and let's just take a look at those so everybody gets to see those. Um, plugins, models, transformers. Robots in disguise. Uh, okay. All right. Yes, these are the ones. Okay, great. Yes, so these are the examples of how to use the, the question answering model. Um, and this is the question answering with. This one is. Or this wait. One is this is, oh, yeah, this is the classifier. Wait. Uh, do we not? We don't. Or let's see. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, here's the QA model. Okay, yes. And this is the one with context that we had been talking about, so sweet. All right, very cool. Wow, we got a bunch of NLP stuff in here now. Nice job. Um, okay, merge examples, merge NLP classification model. Right, we merged the classification model this week too, right? Or was that last? Was that this week, Hamachu? Uh, no, I think uh, we did. Uh, last, last week, I don't think it's Okay. Let me just... Uh, All right. Um, question answering. Classification. Oh, yeah, that was last week. I swear I just merged. I swear I just merged another one. Oh, time flies. All right, okay. Um, wow, okay, wow. I could have sworn that was just the other day. All right, okay. Uh, I must have. I should have forgotten that in meeting minutes um, last week. Okay. Um, and then uh, so fixed. Merged, fix for all right. Um, so nothing you want to talk about then? Um, no, uh, because I will first read the bit what Saksham and Agin are up to with the data flow and operations because okay. there are a lot of stuff going on there. And uh, then I'm, I'm reading that, and then I will start working on NLP. Then maybe I will cool. talk to you about this. Okay. Yeah, and then you can tell us, please, please take notes on what you, uh, on your perceptions of the documentation and where it's lacking. I know, I know, we know it's lacking, especially we know we need like a page on data flows and just like a bunch of random shit you can do with data flows um, and sort of various syntaxes for things. Um, but so if you 
sort of as you think of things as you're reading through it please write them down and then we can we can you know really yeah. focus on it yeah. so, great thank you uh, okay um uh, Okay, um, and then I think I think Yash might have had to drop or something happened. And then uh, Sudarsana, how are you doing? Or wait, no, uh, Sudarsana didn't join. That's Sudhanshu. I heard, I saw, I saw somebody. So Sudhanshu, how's it going? Yes, it's going. Sorry, my I looked at my phone. And it's small letters. Um, what have you been up to lately? So uh, actually, like I had to like uh, uh, like ask some questions regarding the auto scale on. Cool. So right, like there are like some problems in that. So like like we can discuss it. How to? Start. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Yeah, let's discuss that first, and then we'll do review PR review. Um, last, yes, yes. so let's see. So, okay. So, um, yeah. So, what are you? Uh, how's it going? And what are you thinking? So, actually, in the. Uh the config file mm -hmm. so there are like uh, many different kind of configurations which are for the auto escalon part mm -hmm. and there are like some configurations which are for like uh, the dffml that is features predict yeah and directly thing so what is happening is uh, when i'm passing the configuration from uh, the what the user has given oh yeah to the uh, model where i'm uh, creating that model yeah, so there go. it is like uh, uh, like there are like some positional argument problems. Oh yeah, okay. So let's just go through, and this is a com yeah, this is a common problem um, that we've had before. Um, let's see. Uh... Uh, where is that? Is it in TensorFlow? I think we have sort of like a format with a little for loop that we can follow. Um, or maybe it's in the scikit model, small scikit, DFO model, scikit, uh, scikit base. All right. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Okay. So check this out, and I will put a link to it. Um, this is how we did it with the scikit models, um, and this should be pretty much exactly what you're looking at here. So, wow, we got a lot of models now. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. Scikit base. I believe this is what you're talking about, right? So we want to take the parent, or well, let's. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. So this is probably what you want. And where is that code? No, I saw you instantiated somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Here. Yeah. Yes. So you're gonna want this, like, you know, somewhere around here. Um, I believe this will be helpful for you. Yeah, so, you so basically, yep. So basically, we are taking a dictionary and deleting those keys, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes. So, and uh, I mean, yeah, I saw I saw your code there, and I was one. I I didn't see your features code, so I didn't I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, okay, he's on to that step now. Um, so sorry, I should, should have thought more into it. Okay, so I'm glad we got that though. Is there anything else that you're um, sort of thinking about on this? Uh, no, so actually, like, this part is done. Okay, So cool. 
So like, should I like add the tests for it? And then yeah. like we can merge it. Yeah. So let's add some tests and let's do, and let's make sure that, so let's see. Um, uh, okay. So need, uh, how do we remove uh, different config things? Just, I'm trying to take more complete notes here, because especially since last time when we didn't have our, uh, or didn't have the recording. Oh, like uh, also, like I had to ask, like, uh, do we, uh, like, the do we want to have that default directory for models? Oh yeah, let's or not more. let's not have that. Yeah, so we I think yeah, Sudarshan went through and recently removed all the default directories. So I think we're currently in a good spot where we don't have any default directories. I don't know if we got all the feature hashing that happened. We need to go through and recheck that. Um, so um, need to recheck before next. So we need to recheck before next release that we removed any places where uh, where a model was um, a model was um, uh, uh, model directory was being determined from feature hashes etc because uh, you know how we were doing we were doing this thing where we were trying trying to be clever and you know putting the directory in the cache and then trying to figure out based on what features the user used what model to load from the cache well we all had run into that issue right where that was actually tripping us all up um so uh yeah we're gonna we, we want to make sure that we got rid of that before the next release and so we're gonna we're gonna make it so that there's no default directory um now let's see now part of this i think this is something we probably need to talk about is um so let's see um okay and then you're gonna need so you're gonna need to um load i think this is another thing is that we're gonna need to probably load and save these things so load model um yeah okay job dot load okay self dot path okay so in this case not a problem well yeah in this case not a problem or well config and symbol size okay so this is the thing is that um we now that we're um now that now that we're getting rid of that um it means that we might load like if we give the directory okay let me give an example here um Um, okay, so train model SLR um, model feature um, X int one model predict um, Y int one. Um, uh, sources, CSV, source, file name, data, dot CSV, uh, oh, model directory, that's what we're talking about, model directory, uh, oh, features. Okay, so 
now we end up with this SLR model, right? Um, and this is what Sudarshana had recently done as she went through and made it so that it wasn't sort of a hash of the features. It's just going to say model um, within that directory, right? And, and then we're storing the JSON uh, in there um, because with this simp with this SLR model as the basic one, and it just stores its config in a JSON. So now the issue becomes like, and for yours, I mean, so this is the most this is the most simplistic model, right? Um, so this is not this is not going to be um, an issue. This is not this is like you're not going to see the same issue. But to illustrate the point, right? So say for example, we don't pass in um, we don't pass in um, where are we using that this ensemble ensemble size, right? If we don't pass in that that value into the config next time, this is part of why we were doing that hashing to ensure that you end up with the same model parameters in memory, right? Yes. So if we don't, yeah, we don't pass that in. We just pass the directory. It's not going to know what to do, right? Um, yes. So it's just going to use the default value from before, and the default value is not going to be the same default value that you used, uh, or it's not going to be the same as the one you specified, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, this SLR model is not a great example, but um, we should probably do something. We probably need to do something, um, and it probably needs to be like within model or something um, to say, you know, load, save to directory, load to directory, right? Oh, actually, we were going to do this whole. Now I'm remembering there was a whole another thing we were going to do, um, but. Basically, we we were going to do this. We we need we need to basically say first thing when you get into the model, you instantiate that config, right? Or well, we probably do the double a enter on. Uh, let's see, yeah, we need to make sure that we're loading things into the the self dot parent config, right? Um, and uh, and so we probably like you can do that in each model could do that however it wanted but let's mix we need to make some sort of standard way um because or else we're going to lose things right um as we go from predict to train to accuracy on the command line yes yes okay so let's see so we need to make some sort so uh, and let me flag. Let me create. Let's let's do some let's do some experiments and project management here. Um, so issue. Uh, okay. So we need to. This will mean that we need to make an issue for this. Um, okay. So. Okay. This is, this is what that will mean. Um, so we need to make some some uh, methods at the model level to help us um, to help us save and load configs before we use the properties in them. Um, this will ensure that if a user doesn't pass a value that they value for accuracy or predict that they did for train, um, will not We'll use the same value we saved rather than the config, config structures default since it wasn't specified the next time. Right, because this was the whole thing that we were trying to avoid by doing the feature hashing is that they would specify different things and mainly is because when I when I had done this um, one point with TensorFlow, um, I realized the TensorFlow model blows up when you give it different feature names and different parameters and stuff. Um, and and so I was like, all right, okay, well, it's, uh, 
we don't we we want we want them the tensorflow if you guys have seen the tensorflow error messages but they're they're gnarly looking things um and uh so the idea was was save people from ever having to look at those um so yeah okay but this is this is what we really need to do here so this is sort of just we'll create this issue don't worry about this now for sk learn stuff just um the what i meant to say on this is that um um so um uh so next steps next steps is to or to write the tests um when you write the tests um so where do we have a good example of this actually yeah so when you write the tests you are probably going to be sufficiently writing the test if you do something like Himanshu did in this one here. Um, so basically when we've been, I mean, we talked about how we're gonna need to write that sort of config parser and stuff um, to validate documentation within Sphinx and things, but that's, uh, that's uh, not gonna be a part of this. Um, but sort of just generically, we also need probably something like that for models, right? Um, and because we keep having a, you know, we need to command line syntax for models. Um, so, uh, where did it go? Well, it's, it's in question answering and classification, both of them. It is, oh, it's in both of them. Great, thanks. All right, so, here. Yeah, this. Um, so, and this stuff is not, so this is like, you know, this is, this was Himanshu, you know, actually writing out all the CLI commands within the, the Python file. But so what is really going to be, uh, so test run directory with CSV. So what you're going to want to focus on here um, would be, you know, something like this. Um, so uh, when you write those tests, and this is something that we should add to the documentation. Well, this is something that we should make some sort of standard method to do for us because we keep having to do this, and and uh, and I know it's probably annoying. Um, I know that when I've done it, it's been like, God damn, like, don't we have a function to do this? Um, when you write the tests, um, uh, duplicate this behavior uh, where the test is reading the C, the .sh files um, uh, so the test is basically just reading the .sh files in and then calling them from the you know the pythonic interface of the command line um, and that way um, that way you have written the examples for the shell and you've tested them from from python right so you have a test and your test is the examples essentially and you're testing the examples all in one um so it saves it saves saves time the problem is that we need to make a wrapper around this stuff this generic idea where we keep testing these examples so and actually that is something that i don't think i think yash dropped but he'll be he would he needs this stuff for the windows testing i think is because he's going to need to load these sh files and and uh and uh and then uh well you guys heard what he said about that last week right was he's going to need to load the sh files because we can't run some of the stuff won't run exactly on Windows and it just doesn't have bash. So we need to load the SH files in, run them with the CLI.CLI, and then um, and then um, uh, and then uh, fucking um, yeah, have basically automate all of that, right? Um, all right, okay. So is that we're good on auto SK learn? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, cool. Was there anything else on your end, Sutanshu? Anything you're looking at for after this um, that you yeah, were so interested like, in? After this, like, I will probably be like adding the auto regressor. Okay, nice. Oh yeah, this is a classification then, one. Yeah. Yes, and then I will like move on to like PlayML. 
Okay, sweet, sweet. That'd be cool. And there's more to be done. I know uh, Hashim sort of started the um, Dal for Pi stuff, but I've been in contact. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Yeah, so I've been in contact with the team within Intel that does Dal for Pi, and they had some some interesting things to say basically about how they did. Um, if you have, and I pushed a patch for this, so if you have Dal for Pi installed, um, so. Uh, if you have Dell 4 pi installed, um, they provide functionality to patch sklearn um, so that it's um, faster or like it's more, or it's, yeah, it's faster on Intel machines, uh, like, you know, recent Intel machines. You know, things, aka ones with uh, new instructions for matrix multiply. Um, so, you guys, I don't know if you guys, so actually, this, you may not be familiar with this, but so basically, Intel does a lot of work. You know, everybody always wants a faster processor, but the thing is, like, you can only make them go so fast, um, and uh, because it gets, it just gets very hard to make it go faster, right? Um, so instead of making it go faster, what they do is they make, they try to make certain things faster, and the best way to make certain things faster, as we all know, is to uh, to parallelize them, um, and so what they've done is just like you know why we use gpus for a lot of machine learning stuff is because um you know we can we have this uh, simd instructions single instruction multiple data where we can do um you know lots of the same type of you know operations like multiplies and stuff like that um very quickly um but on different small pieces of data um and so intel has what is called the advanced vector extensions avx uh instructions oh, i have used that yeah i had an assignment to write convolutions in AVX. all right cool yeah so what the the thing is that as and as you probably found out so how was how was uh giving your honest opinion on on how easy was that to to do that i didn't like that you, yeah you didn't like it Neither does anyone else. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is this is this team's goal here is uh, no one no one fucking wants to deal with that, right? So Intel writes all these instructions and everybody goes like, uh, "Thank you very much. Like, I'm I'm good. Like, I do not want to go change all my code to use your new instructions. That sounds like a huge pain in the ass." And then on top of that, I have to do detection of like what processor I'm on and stuff so that I don't you know like segfault if I try to run an instruction or get an illegal instruction. Um, exception if i try to run an instruction that doesn't exist on this person's processor right um it's a huge pain so these dalfa pi guys they they've actually been doing some some cool stuff where they they've looked at scikit and done like some optimizations on top of scikit or figured out how to like They've, what they figured out is like how to hook into Scikit and replace some of the like lower level math operations and matrix operations so that Scikit will use these instructions if you have them. Um, and so well, this is really cool. Um, so the um, now if you have Dal for Pi installed on your machine and you have you know the instruction set like the you know you have a processor with the instructions that will you know make it go fast. Um, uh, they changed the UI on me. Um, well, I, I accepted the beta, but you know I know they're going to change it anyway, so I might as well get used to it. Um, so if you have those instructions and stuff, then um, all you have to do is call this Dal for Pi SK Learn patch SK Learn, um, and it will you know, basically speed up your SK Learn stuff. Um, so I added this to, they told me about it, and so I just added this to um, Scikit, the Scikit models. So basically, if you're running the Scikit models and you have Dal for Pi installed, and, you know, you pretty much have to install it through Conda or try to build it, as Himachu figured out, or as Hashim figured out. Um, would, Himachu, you were the one who had to figure out Conda in the first place. Um, but... Yeah, that, then that was a pain. So if, but but you know, if you got Conda installed, and if you run the CI locally, um, you have Conda installed, and I think it will install um, 
I think it will install Delphi Pi in there when you run the, the all of them. Um, uh, it it'll patch your stuff um, and make Scikit faster, which is sweet. Um, and that's all we have to do is they told me about this and I was like, sweet, done, like great, thank you. Um, so I put up an issue where we need to document that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that they do is what they provide. It sounds like Intel's going to have some more like, uh, like they're going to maybe do some like they have, you know how they have their accelerated compute sticks and stuff, right? Like the Movidius and things like that. So they're going to have more stuff like that. And it sounds like they might have some that are just like, you know, not on a USB stick, um, but like, you know, probably I would assume connected via PCI or something. Um, so more just machine learning chip stuff that are like, they call them accelerators. So basically they're going to transparently use those if you have them. Um, and then they also have this really nice thing, um, which is basically, and you got, we've talked about this before, but the fact that, um, you know, all of our models right now pretty much pull everything into memory and then do stuff on it. Right. And like all of it, DFFML is built to be asynchronous so that essentially you wouldn't have to do that, right? Um, you could stream everything. And well, I like, obviously I've had no com uh, communication with these guys until now. And, and I come to find out they've got this beautiful thing that they call the streaming API. So you can use their models and you can use their models without loading all your data into, um, into memory. So like they are a perfect fit um, for, they were like a perfect fit for, for our project you know, uh, here because we can basically, you, I mean, you could take a data set like of arbitrary size and be running DFFML using the Dalfor Pi model. Um, and like, you know, it could be like terabytes, right. And it'll just stream it through, right. Just records in records out compute. And, and then you throw away the memory for that record after you're done with it. Right. Um, so that is, that is pretty cool. Um, and so I think, I think we're using that right now. I think Hashim's implementation used that. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. Actually, it may not have, but so there's some more work to be done there too. Um, if you're interested, um, uh, streaming, and GPU support just because we already have, uh, you know, we already have that model in there um, in the code base. So it might be good to go do some improvements on it. Um, but if you want to do the plat ML stuff, that's awesome too. Um, uh, I think that has more support for, if I remember correctly, pre trained models and things like that. I couldn't quite remember. Or what is it? Uh, it like transpiles or. It's like yeah, it has like a tensor compiler thing. Yeah, yeah. That see, that would be really yeah. cool too, because I don't think we have anything that supports that right now. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that there's like sort of cool things in multiple areas, depending on whether you want to go and now that you've gone through and created a whole model, right? Like you know that there's you know the other parts of the infrastructure involved. So if you wanted to sort of you know just just sort of go and and get more out of the one that we already have. Um, sort of as, as a break from from writing a lot of this scaffolding code, you know, because um, that can that can you know it can it, there can be a lot of scaffolding code. So if you need a break from the scaffolding code, I wanted to offer that as an option, um, or you can you know yeah that would be great. Like yeah, I would love to work on it. Cool, sweet. Yeah, that'll be I sweet. I would love to work on it. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I'll just put that out there as an option, um, and then yeah. Otherwise, you sure. know, yeah, whatever you whatever you want to do, I just want to give you give you sort of fun ideas so um and then okay so let's see um so Saksham, let's go look at that image operation pr actually let's look at the locking pr because i saw that's a green check so if Ogden wants to wants to uh wants to get out of here he can um okay um da, 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 da. Okay, um, let's see. Well, I would trust that you did the line numbers correctly, obviously, so looks good. Yeah, um, I, 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 although we're not testing this. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's test it. Um, that's my only feedback here, I guess. Um, so let's... Make a test. Oh, testing means like since the first one is not actually correct. Like, how do you want to test this? Check the number of cones. Uh, check check that the output is correct here. 
Yeah, so the first output might vary. Um, we can check that, uh, like the number of ones and number of twos are not equal, or they are both not equal to two. Oh yeah, it might. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Wait a minute. Um, okay, locking act. Thanks, sorry. I know. Uh, um, okay, set that equals one. Okay, yeah, just, you know, do the, yeah, look at the count, so, for test, so, under test tutorials, data flows, um, okay, um, so, compare, so, Look at output, ensure correct number of set lines, um, check each line to verify that I left I equals equals right I, right. Um, so without locked object, let's see. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, so, um, or well, for the last one, right? Um, and then because we don't want to test locking, we want to test, um, we want to test, let's see. Um, is this, well, the order, you said the orders are, yeah, the order is always going to be different, right? Um, mm. So, or well, not necessarily always, but it might be. Um, yeah, it might. Yeah. Um, for the f yeah, so, uh, so yeah, and if the order is different, will it? Yeah, the. Yeah, in the one, like second one, we can count the number of twos and count the number of ones and assert both of them yeah. equal to four. Yeah. The old string. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just you, yeah. So do s something about the second one, right? Just to make sure that we're getting the right output there, right? Um, okay. So yeah, make sure we have the right number of lines, right? And you know the right number of lines that say set, um, and then the right number of, of numbers, right? Um, okay. okay. And then I think we'll be good there. Is there anything else you wanted to say on that one? Nothing. Nothing. Else. Okay. Cool. Great. Um, Okay, and then Saksham image operations PR. So yeah, and then as as usual, I don't know, I don't know. The uh, image image operations are very confusing. So if anybody wants to drop, just feel free to drop. And just as let me reiterate, as always, you know that if you if you want to drop off the call, it's uh, feel free. It's drop on, drop off. So um, okay, so new image processing operations. All right, so what are we looking at here? Uh, I changed the default uh, value commit. Can you just click on the uh, default value commit to see the change? All right, great. Uh, so there was uh, two data flows, hello blank data flow and hello world data flow in which you were using copied or deep copy. Mm -hmm. So it was copying the no, uh, no defa uh, default value, no default object of that data flow. So it was not giving a correct data flow in the service HTTP test. So I mm -hmm. changed it to in the definition uh, in types.py. I changed it to like the missing type hacks you've used uh, hack you've used in data classes. Ah, okay, great, awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, and, and about the that stuff about feature vector merging. Feature vector merging. Oh yeah, so yeah, we want to talk about feature vector merging. Okay. Um, okay. So, and then the other thing is, when we're talking about feature vector merging, I feel like 
Okay, so and where's our Gitter chat? Um, so this was what you were talking about, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So is this, this the same command we want to run? No, I've removed the combined command. It okay. was only taking three arrays for now, so it was not a good operation. Okay. I just added it temporarily to work, so it was working before. Mm -hmm. Like it was uh, giving me the single feature vector I wanted, but what if there are two or four op uh, uh, operations we are running at once and need uh, to convert them into a single feature vector? Okay. So, like uh, we don't know how many array. Oh, I don't think. Let's see. Um, wait. Okay. So you're saying yeah? There's an arbitrary number of of uh, feature yes. vectors. Like how do we combine them? Well, okay. So. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, so I believe that we added these array operations in the integration usage example PR. I don't think we've merged them yet. And actually, we may have taken them out too. I'm not sure. Um, we probably just want to merge them on in. I think they asked you there. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, here they are. Okay, so let's add these in, and then um, and then play with how this might work. All right. Check it out. Um, what was I looking for? Um, okay. So we've got our array operations here. Um, okay, so, and then is this, so is this relatively the command that we're talking about here, though? Like, I mean, this is pretty much what we want, right? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I was speaking with my mic off. Okay. So these are three feature vectors I uh, I wanted to convert them into a single feature vector. Mm -hmm. So I was using a, a temporary command combined to combine them into a single feature vector. Okay. Um, uh, this won't work now because I have removed yeah, the combined. Yeah, remove command. combine. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, array extract value, array create, array append. So we need like an array extend. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, and it would be great if we had, let's see. Oh, I wonder. Also, I had a question like, can we like just give the three feature vectors to to the model and it'll it'll work? I haven't tried it. Uh, can we just give the three feature vectors to the model and it will work? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Well, I think, I think, I think so, right? I mean, well, the thing is, like on TensorFlow, it might work, but um, on uh, on, on TensorFlow, it'll work, but on Scikit, it won't work, right? I think because Yash was working on that. Wasn't that the deal? Uh, yes. Yeah. So. So. Um, I think it will work. What do you think? Maybe. Uh, like, we had 
we had idx feature uh, I, uh, idx source loading a feature mm-hmm. uh, of name image with arrays yeah so it was a it was one feature vector it was a, uh, and it was exploding that so maybe we can give three feature vectors and it can explode them into yeah well yeah so that's what i'm saying is it'll it'll work on i mean it'll work on uh um well the idx source was um yeah, that's MNIST, right? Wasn't that using TensorFlow in the example? So it won't work on, oh. on Scikit, though, right? No, we. Uh, that's why we changed the okay. Scikit code, because to support for the MNIST example. Yeah, okay. Oh, we did change it? Okay. That that um. was the main issue, right? We couldn't support feature vectors in Scikit. Okay. Um... Okay, yeah. So I mean, look, let's just try. It. Let's just try it, right? Um, so, so results combine. We're gonna get rid of these combines. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what we're looking at here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, um, actually we don't even need a ray. Okay. Um, and then... Okay, yeah, so you wanted to, you wanted to, okay, so you want to retrain the model basically using all of these features, right? Uh, yes, so that we can have a better accuracy because yeah. other data sets might be complicated. Yep, yep. MNIST was very easy. Yeah, right. Okay, so... So feature, okay, so, um, so let's, yeah, let's check out this feature CMO. Um, all right, so inputs, ranges, okay, outputs, D size. All right, so we have um, calc hist. So hist. Oh wait, we ended up with okay associate spec. Okay. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to take the seed image and associate it with um, and do let's see associate spec is image and then calc image or combine outputs. Result. So uh, we can uh, just use calci his dot outputs dot result to a feature one in a, uh, associate spec. We can give that to us uh, in the seed and feature two and feature three. So, yeah. So would that? Well, I think we can use. I think we can use associate or well associate definition was the input definition to what the output value. Oh uh, yes, yes. That might be better here. Um, uh, oh. well, I think we have it on the dock site. Maybe it would be a little more friendly to look at here. Um, so let's see, plugins, operations. Okay, so we had what? Yeah, it was value is feed with output. Um, and output is going to be, let's see, output is a definition. Yeah, it looks up for the input. So I guess we can't give that a features one name. 
like that. Wait, we can't give, let's see. You're saying, okay, associate definition. Wait, so what is it's to out? It looks up for the definition for both of the value and the key both. The value and the key both, the definition. That works though. Um, because value is feed. So if the value coming in, let's see, associate definition, beef, feed input, feed input, feed def, output, definition is output. Okay, I think this does work actually because we're basically taking input definition to output definition and input definition is image, right? Yes. So, uh, oh, but we end up, we end up with, our problem ends up being that we only have one of these things that we can associate with. So let's try it with one and then maybe we can modify the operation. So yeah, that's what I was saying that oh, we can't okay. rename. Yeah, we can't rename. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, the output operation stuff is Isaac. Yeah. Try to, trying to figure out output operations that work for everything. That's why we can just create more of them, but that's, um, so let's see. So value uh, to output. Let's just see what happens if we do. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, or oh yeah, we can just. Or let's see. What are we doing? We're gonna do the um, the edit command, right? So we want the data flow source. Um, so, uh, da, da, da. okay. So yeah, with the data flow source, we take the data flow and we, yeah, okay, with the output of the data flow becomes the new features. So, we did associate definition, associate spec. Okay, associate spec. Oh, did we reuse associate spec? I guess we did. Um, so combine outputs result. And then when you sent it, let's see what are those, it would be. Um, okay, so we're gonna need to change it so that we're gonna need to change it so that, um, like if it sees a list here, because we'll need it to be image, and then, so map image to these things, right? Um, so something like, um, uh, do we need, or we don't want resize, we just want these guys' outputs, right? Uh, 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 maybe, uh, like, yeah, that's an example with using resize. Okay, so this gets a resize, yeah, this gets resized as an input, and then calcist, harlic, and hu moments get resized as an input, right? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm looking at the flow right now. Um, <laughs> Um, let's see, so, and then we basically want the outputs of those to become our new, you know, okay, but this is going to map, yeah, this is going to map image to these guys, so what we really need is something that's more like, okay, we really need something that's more like, um, um, so calcist, can we just use git multi or git single? I think we can just use git single, quite honestly. Um, yeah, I think we can just use git single here. Because if we just use git single,
we just use get single, then it should take all of these and make those the output. So we're going to end up with like harlic.outputs.result. These will be our feature names, but that's fine. Um, we can we can use that. Um, so let's grab the data flow source command here. Oh yeah, you need to change uh, associate definition to get single. Oh, in thank you. Oh, I think I did. See, so, yeah, I did. Uh, oh, but there, I needed to. Uh, yeah, thank you. So the third uh, output would be hue moments. Uh, third output. Let's see. Well, we should end up with a dictionary of outputs, or what well, we should end up with. Well, we'll we'll print it. Sorry, say say what you're gonna say. Like first input is Calcius one out Calcius output, second is Haralik output, and yep. third is Hue moments output. Yep, yep, yep. That should be what we see here. So let's do a list, on, and let's list it on the predict. Um, so let's see. Yeah, let's do this instead. Okay, so image that CSV. Okay, so we need this here. Oh, image that CSV is already in this directory. Right? Okay, so um, source image features, search image data flows. Okay, and features is the features that we pass into the data flow. And so this is features.yaml. Um, and we're just going to do a list here to see what happens. records. Oh. Image.csv. Okay, yeah, oh, that, oh yeah, we got to run bash image, image file. Yeah, now we have image.csv. There we go. Um, okay, so it didn't work. Okay, so we end up with inputs. Okay, so calcist output associate definition. Okay, yeah, we're running a search. Oh, because I didn't rerun this after I wrote it. That's what happened with Sutanchu's thing the other day. I hadn't rerun the command. Okay, definition missing while well resolving seed. Definition get single, oh, get single spec. Oops. There we go. Let's see, we're gonna, oh God. Oh, let's do pretty. Okay, so yeah, it's got... working. Oh, we just need to change that to his built-in. I have. Uh, I'll just push the change. Okay, just in the same in. in the same pull request. I'll push the change. Okay, it looks like well, it looks like it may not quite be working working because we got calcist outputs result. Yeah, outputs in result. in the in the create data flow command, uh, you missed. Uh, you wrote Haralik two times. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you. Well, this is good news. Oh, I gotta rerun it, obviously. Oh, wait a minute, are we getting... Oh, we need to... Uh, we need to fix the... Okay, that's something that we just found. Um, 
so we need to have um, if we do pretty we shouldn't output this um, so let me see okay um, we uh, what uh, are you saying I'm trying to say that if we do um, uh, when we do pretty, it's a grip. Uh, then, uh, sorry, uh, there's a way to not have it output the JSON. Um, so basically, what is it? Display help. It's like yield something. Oh, command output override. That's what it is. Um, so what we needed to do here is dfml. Okay, so let me just post this. Um, let me post the stuff that we just he did here. Um, just let me just cat this create df samples. Or where am I? Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the Gitter chat. Um, okay, I'll try it out and see if I can train the models. Okay, great. Um, Thank and you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then... No, it's spaces for some reason. Okay, so and so that looks like it's given us the right thing there, um, and then we just need to rename the features. I think. Yeah, we just need to rename. Well, I don't know if I mean renaming the features is not critical. Um, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, it like doesn't it doesn't really matter. Like it's not pretty, but like. Does it really matter? Like, I don't know if it really matters. Like, we can, we can, we can do some more work, but uh, my guess is we're going to end up having a new output operation if we do that, or modifying uh, the existing ones. In like when we are training and giving model features, so wouldn't that be like calcius dot outputs dot like that? We need to give. Yeah, we'd that. have to give them like that. Yeah, so that's not pretty. Like, we can we can change it, but let I mean to get it working immediately, it's not critical right so we'd have to we'd have to modify one of those output operations probably yeah, we right. can look at that later. yeah yeah we can look at that later okay so let's just make some notes here about this so um uh we'll make them each their own feature vector um and let's see so uh Use the git single operation to um, get each uh, operation's output uh, image modifying operations output as own feature. Um, and then what else did we say? So we said. Uh, Right now, the names are ugly. Um, oops, whoa. Um, we would probably need to write a new output operation or modify the ones we have to make it nice and we found that so found that pretty printing in dffml list needed to return yield um, command output override I believe it was okay and I'm 
just going to push up a patch for that. Um, uh, do, and this is what I meant. So CLI uh, has listed something it is. So this basically just says um, don't don't print that that JSON at the end there. Okay, okay. That JSON uh, list. Uh oh, oh yeah, that JSON list. Uh, I'll I'll just push this up as its own thing. Um, yeah, you can also edit the. Uh, the util uh, util data uh, file to is built in, is built so in. that it can show it can show the feature vectors here that was there, right? Oh yeah, let's see. So oh, CLI command. Oh yeah, flatten right. Yeah. Or was it, let's see, I think we actually we moved it to DFML util data, right? Yeah, yeah. there we go. Yeah, it should be is building. Okay, everyone, I'll be dropping up. Good night. All right. Good night. Have a good one, Agan. Yeah. See you. Um, is there, let's see. Thank you. I think there's a method to just say if it's callable. Uh, is instance collections dot callable instead? Let's try this. All right. Okay, we've got a slight formatting problem here, um, but it looks like it is doing things. So nice. All right. So let's let's um, let's say this is. I'll leave this with you, Saksham, um, and you can sort of fix the formatting problem here. Um, okay. Okay. And then we will. Uh, call it a day unless anybody else has anything else. Anything, anybody got anything else they want to talk about? Yeah, I also updated the NIST example. Oh, you did, you you're updated that, great. Yeah, that's it for my side for now. All right. Hey, Thank thanks. You. Good job. Um, okay. And I'm actually just, let's see, I'll just actually let you add a commit, a commit for this um, since you're going to be in there fixing formatting and stuff anyways. So you can just make this its own commit. Uh, also a commit for fixing uh, no, just on. I put it on pretty. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, have a good weekend. And just, you know, let me know if there's anything. And I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Okay. Yeah. Have a good Bye. one. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.